welcome to this last installment of uh, Bach on a Jazz Bass, last for suite number one, that is. We've arrived at the final movement, the jig. The jig is a swift paced movement in 6 8 uh, measure, and uh, it's quite virtuosic. And there are quite a few challenges technically here. I'll go through it slowly, and in the end I'll play through it without the repeats, just to save some time. At the beginning, I choose to play the first notes stopped, not the harmonics. And this is because I think it sounds better uh, within the line that everything is stopped and not that like a couple of notes here and there are harmonics. It's too much of a difference. So stop notes and I use the open G instead of playing the G on the A string. And I use this open G to shift to get the thumb up to the octave. I play the first thumb position there and then I immediately shift to the thumb on the A. So. There we have it again, this trill on the, between the B and the C uh, after this double stop. Like in the Saraband and like in the Minuetto and in several of the other movements. I do it the same way. I choose to trill between the first and second fingers. Uh, you might prefer the third and the second. That might be a more correct uh, technique. But for me, it's, it's always worked better to, to make a little shift there and and trill between the first and second fingers. So you'll have to experiment with that. And then I, I again stop the D in the double stop, the fifth. And then continuing, I use um, sort of an interesting fingering. I, I use the thumb on the F sharp in the next bar, so. And I do a hammer on. And then I play the E on the D string. And then the same kind of fingering, third finger on the A, thumb on the E, hammer on, and then the two notes on the D and G string. So. I think it sounds best in this kind of melodic patterns that repeat to keep the same kind of distribution between the strings. So the same kind of fingering. And going on, I shift to the G harmonic, or actually the G uh, closed. And then second finger and stretch the thumb down on the D string. First finger and thumb. Then I use the harmonic A there. I shift now down to the G string. So, first finger, second finger, and then third finger, small shift, and then pull off to the thumb. And then we continue in the thumb position. Moving out of thumb position. Together in a moderate tempo. By the way, I elect to play, I, I want to, I will play all the 16s uh, detached, um, so. Just there I played with a three finger technique on the right hand, 
So starting with a ring, the third finger, followed by second and first. I don't use a three finger technique like strictly ever. Uh, I'm not like uh, the great Danish bass player Nils Engerstedt Pedersen. He was a master of that. He would play all patterns with three fingers alternating strictly, even 16th note funk patterns, which moves around. Some of you guys probably do it. I never learned it that way. So I'm just using it when it fits like for, for triplets at times. And here when there's three and three notes in um, sequence. Second half, we start with the third finger on the A and we, do, uh, we place the thumb on the F sharp. We play those first two bars in position, or first one and a half bar, I would say. I'm saying we, I always mean I, not we. So I play from the A on the third finger and then the thumb on the F sharp. It's a Dittersdorf position, you know. We have the thumb on the F sharp. Bass players, we all know that. kind of fingering. So we have this shift there. We practice shifts from the last note of the previous position and then into the first note of the higher position. At first I practice it anyway uh, with a glissando. Of course never with the intention of actually playing it that way unless called for but it's just a way of getting the technique right. Even, I might even start it really slow. Making the glissando quicker and quicker after a while. until I can eliminate the glissando. So I'll keep doing that until it's perfect, until I can't get it wrong. So this is basically how I'll practice this kind of passage which involves shifts. So here... Notice the same right hand fingering for the 16th notes. So 3, 2, 1. Apologies for the intonation uh, mess up there, but yeah, you, get, you see what I mean. So 3, 2, 1 in the right hand for the 16th. That's how I, I choose to play. And then comes a series of shifts uh, in the thumb position. So we, I start on the third finger on the high D. I, I stop the note, I don't play the harmonic. 3-1, that's my fingering. And then thumb on the A, A-ish. And stretch the thumb down to the D. Then a new third finger on the C. Thumb. And stretch to the C. And then third finger on the B then shift down, stay in thumb position. I shift to the second finger on the G. And then I shift out of the thumb position. Okay. Notice the open G on the arpeggio going down there. For me, it's smoother than. Continuing, we get some rather large uh, position jumps and we'll practice those in the same way as before. So... The last one I'll play from the D string after the... Then 
going on, the same kind of uh, crabbing upwards as earlier. Then the thumb on the B flat. And I'm in position. Together, this should be something like this. So I hope you've enjoyed my playthrough of this first suite. Let me know in the comments below if you have suggestions for the future videos. And I'll see you next week in the second suite. Bye for now.